Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of the Extra Point. We got a full house in the house today. Got the gang all here. Got plenty of sports to talk to y'all. I know we're gonna we're gonna throw some bows today, but before we get into any of that, a word from our sponsor. We are sponsored by May Jane's Coffee. That's M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S coffee.com. You can get your Colombian and your whiskey blend coffee. And as my brother Mike uh, told me a couple of shows ago, if you do have a Keurig, you can get the refillable Keurig cup. So that won't stop you from ordering you a bag of May Jane's. She has t-shirts, she has the flavor syrups, and she has mugs. Again, thank you all who have purchased and we would appreciate your continued support of my lovely daughter, Denise Denise, in her coffee business. And that's May Jane's Coffee, M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S-C-O-F-F-E-E.com. Right on. Shouts out to May Jane's Coffee. And this show is also brought to you by Wolverine underscore comics TX. We buy, sell, and trade comics. Um, thanks to the followers, we're past 500 followers on Instagram. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to do another another giveaway next week. So, tune in for that. Uh, so, follow us on Instagram, Wolverine underscore comics TX. Right on. Shouts out to both of our sponsors. Thank you all for joining us today. Now, before we get into the, the the crux of what we want to talk about, because we got a lot of college football, right. a lot of NFL we want to get into today, I wanted to start off with us putting a nice little bow on the Deshaun Watson saga, if you will. We finally have a conclusion. The NFL, the NFLPA, and Watson's camp has agreed to an eleven game suspension, five million dollar fine, and counseling. Uh, we've already litigated this thing and relitigated. So, Tasha, I'm going to come to you with this first. What message does this settlement send from the NFL? Um, it's two parts. The message, first of all, it sends Roger Goodell really and truly did not want to have his hands on it because he was the main one clamoring for one year. I want a whole year. And it didn't happen. So that way, when the ruling came down from the outside attorney, it was, okay, this is what he did. Secondly, it looks bad for Cleveland Browns, and it still looks bad for Deshaun. I don't know if you all caught like what Jimmy Haslam said, his comments, as, as well as Deshaun, who's still in denial, which of course, if you say you're not guilty, you're going to deny, deny, deny. You know, that's hood code, that's street code. I get that. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it just looks bad all around, all the explanations, all the continued denial. And what I'm really curious to see is if he really goes through with the counseling, because that is really what got Big Ben's games lowered down to four instead of his original six because he did the counseling because he didn't like show any sympathy or empathy towards anyone either correct now coop let's 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 take this to today let's move this thing forward to on the field what are your expectations for the browns now that we know exactly how long watson will be out uh good morning good morning good morning everybody first of all um i got a I mean, it is what it is. You got Jacoby Percent, a career loan backup. He's a stopgap person. And you you're looking at a mediocre, what, five and five, five and six at that point. Their schedule is, is pretty light because I think they were kind of expecting only six games. And I, I'm just looking at the situation is what would Deshaun be in eleven games? And the league set it up for this big showdown of marketing. So all this was a game from the beginning. He's coming back on game 11 right against the Texans, which nobody wanted to see the Texans and the Browns. So this (laughs) will amp up. (laughs) This is going to amp up the money. Like, so, I mean, it it was a perfect situation. I'll, I'll go back to kind of what T said. Uh, Goodell, he had he wanted no part to this, and they need to just start saying, Hey, look, we're not trying to be in the court litigation system, we just let players play. And if y'all show up, y'all show up. If you watch, you watch. We really don't care. We're a billion dollar entity, and he needs to just stop punishing anybody and let the chips fall where they may. 
I mean, because these guys aren't getting charged criminally. So it's kind of a sticky situation. How do you punish somebody who technically keeps saying, I'm innocent, I'm innocent? And then they had the nerve to say he's going to a behavioral expert on what? <laughs> what is his behavioral problem? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's one of those things to where I think nobody won in this situation. Um, Mike, let me ask you this. You're a fantasy football connoisseur. Would you put uh, Watson as a as a uh, a stash and dash for later on in the season? No, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. I'm not going to take up my bench space. Um, now, let's say during the season, my quarterback gets hurt, my second quarterback gets hurt, and it's right around game 11 or 12. I'm going to see what he does. And, yeah, I'm going to be watching and tuning in, uh, kind of like what NFL wanted. But um, I got I, – from a fantasy owner, yeah, if he produces, like, why not? I mean, I just think it's going to be – he's going to be rusty. He hasn't played in a yes. whole year. And then they said in that preseason game he looked like a hot bag of crap. So I don't really – I don't – you know, I don't see him doing anything. And, again, if they want to be stupid enough to still make, make no claws for themselves to get out of having to pay this guy this money, I'm just going to say <laughs> take your money, Deshaun, and run. Because he's only settled 23. You still have that one that has not been settled. And again, over 66, you know, known record, uh, on record of massages that he has had in, what, a year's time? 66 right. different massage therapists. Sounds like a sex my addiction. Thing, that, right. That's my it. Thing that's is, my thing. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye and good riddance right now, Deshaun, Cleveland, all of you. Ban the whole uh, organization from the first 11 weeks of the season so we can get on about the, the business of football because the NFL does have a lot of great storylines going on that doesn't include disrespecting a segment of their fan base the way that we've been seeing this happen. So bye-bye, Deshaun. We'll holler at you, bro. You won't be on my <laughs> fantasy roster. Good luck to whoever fantasy Hello. roster that you're on, but uh, nah, not for you. I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> right, one, two, three, Cancun. All right, good morning to you, Stephanie. Coulter. Now, Mike, now let's stick with the quarterbacks because this does have some fantasy impact on people who will draft him. Now, last week we were talking about Father Tom versus Tom Brady. And I think we were all in agreement that it's not going to be this year the Father Tom actually gets to TKO on Tom. But could it be Giselle Bunchen and the kids that get to TKO? For those who had been uh, following, uh, Tom Brady's been on a leave of absence. He won't play tonight in Nashville against the Titans. He didn't practice against the Titans all week. And when asked uh, Todd Bowles, head coach of the Bucks, he was noncommittal on when Brady would be back, almost as if to suggest that he's not sure. Now, no one knows for sure why Brady's missing. Mike, I'm going to start with you. Should you be concerned as a Bucks fan or a Tom Brady follower that he may be recontemplating retirement or that he shouldn't have unretired in the first place if he's going to be missing critical time at a junction like this in the season yes and no um i mean he's a veteran right so veteran quarterbacks usually don't even go to training camp anyways uh, i mean when's the last time you saw tom brady in a training camp or preseason well, I mean, they, pre they don't play in preseason games but usually they're there right. for the practices right right but what i was saying is um so i mean him not being there is like okay uh, he is Tom Brady, but I think the part of him not being there is the fact that, I mean, he he's scared. Like, <laughs> they got rid of most of his offensive line, that the good parts of his offensive line. And so right. now he's like, mm, I don't know. Like, y'all y'all, y'all told me y'all were going to, this is one of the things that I wanted was my offensive line, my protection. If right. I don't have any protection, I'm not going to be looking like Aaron Rodgers or, you know, scrambling for my life. And, or no. Justin Fields. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That was extreme, but yeah. Now, look, now I'm, I'm not saying talent for talent, Justin Fields, but the fact that he was running for his life the last two preseason games. Now, yeah. Coop, you made a point last week about the offensive line that he doesn't like to get hit. He doesn't like to play with, with uh, a lot of rookies, a lot of unproven players. And Tasha, you had mentioned that uh, that his center had been carted off the field and, and is out pretty much indefinitely. Are you two concerned, either one of you, Tasha, you first, are you concerned that Tom Brady may be reconsidering unretiring? 
Well, you know how I feel about Tom Brady, so I really don't care. I'm more concerned <laughs> about Todd Bowles. Because, again, you know they always give us the less and want us yes. to do more. Y'all know what I mean by us. That means black, especially black men in, in the NFL in coaching. Right. Right. Uh, this is a bad time for this to happen because Todd Bowles is actually a better coach than Kango, than the Kango King. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't have Tom Brady, who, you you know, you took over this job thinking you were going to have a Brady, thinking you were going to still possibly have a Gronk. And, right. you know, your you know your offensive line was going to be intact. Without that, it's going to look bad for Todd Bowles. Again, Tom Brady has all his accolades. He's going to go in the Hall of Fame. Some right. people say right. he's, goal, he's not the goal. Yeah. But yeah. but it's to me, I'm more concerned about Todd Bowles. And then you think somebody like Julio who says, yeah, I'm going to go one year. I'm going to run with Brady. I'm going to give me a ring. And then you ain't got no Brady. That is a great point, Tasha. One that the national pundits have missed talking about throughout this entire week. Um, Coop, if if there's no Tom Brady, what 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 happens with the Bucks this year, and what happens with Bowles? Do you think it's another one and done situation? Listen, why is this not breaking news every day? Why is Tom Brady getting a pass <laughs> on disappearing? Say it. I, I, I asked on, one Coop. of my main reps last night face to face, and he could not tell me anything. This is serious. He has bamboozled the Bucks. He wanted the limelight. He got to practice. And he said, Oh, I ain't with this. Or did she book? Did <laughs> hey, did Giselle book a trip and say, Hey, you need to get back here or we or we're done? Because I told you I wasn't with this plan anymore. Why are they being mom on this? The NFL never nobody's talking about where he is. Why nobody's looking for him? No, like this is weird. This is weird, dude. Like, they got Kyle trash, not trash. They got trash. And Blaine uh, traveling Gabriel, yeah. he's been on everybody's team. Man, this is, this team is about to be in shambles. Did y'all see last week? You're about to see tonight. This dude has sabotaged this team, and they're just sitting back. If this was any other quarterback, yeah. oh, they would be Mike. getting ran up and down the wall. Man, they done been hoodwinked. <laughs> Damn, they have <laughs> one of them up. <laughs> yes. Why is nobody talking about this? This is amazing. It's, it is, it's like, they're, Mike, just, do it's you like agree? they're just saying, oh, it's Tom Brady. We're, we're, yeah. Like, no, had, let that have been any other. Let it have been any James. Any other. Let it, be, let it have been Ryan Tannehill. Let it have been, oh, uh, what's his name? The one just went to Carolina. Uh, uh, make, 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 Mayfield. Make, make, yeah, Baker yeah, yeah, Mayfield. Yeah, yeah. Or anybody who did something no, like this. No, no, so, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. stop you right there. I'm gonna stop the you right league there. Is scared there, there Mike. Tom Brady. Tom Brady doesn't have to to give anything else to the Buccaneers. He gave them a championship. He does. That's okay. like that's like LeBron going to Cleveland, giving them a championship. No one has ever heard of the Cleveland anymore, right? Commander, your team leader, he left, he won them a championship and walked away. That's the same thing. Stuff coming in, all these Mike, new pieces, this new he showed up. that he has to get used to. He showed and you up trying to say he don't need to be there? He showed up for three days and nobody knows where he is. He's not in contact with them. He's just like I talk to y'all. No one knows where the right? offensive line is either. I mean, now, well, that, and that's why he's there. Leaving. That's not what you do. No. Because he's supposed to be the ultimate leader. Thank and you. And for him to do this and not have nobody hanging out with a helicopter around his house, they're giving him all carte blanc treatment. Like, he's the gold. He can just do what he wants. You can't have a team and a quarterback can just go and take off. A.B. would have did this. It would have been every day, nonstop. Oh, it would have been, been on uh, where, CNN, where it on? Yeah. You, so and then let him go and move stay. on. Like that's quick. Hey, Bob. But he's but there, like she said, Todd Bowles took this job assuming that he was gonna have him. And he reaffirmed that during the summer because they could have, if they knew he wasn't coming back, they could have drafted a quarterback. Because they have none right now. Right. None. Or traded for Baker Mayfield, maybe. It's, no, it's not for, I mean, and then look, like Garoppolo's out there now. You know, he's floating around. They talking about Cleveland. I mean, if Brady's not gonna be there, are you no you wait a minute, Mike? 
I'm not going to let her bring up Garoppolo the way that they just <laughs> ran me out of the, the building last week talking about Garoppolo. Well, no, no, you don't I want him gone. No. Speak, I, don't, I don't want him on my roster. But, I mean, uh, uh, is he is he that petty? Is he going to put an OAA Ron and wait to the last minute and then all your options are exercised and you can't get nobody? Okay, all right. Let's see what happens um, with this with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But I do think that it is cause for concern. Um, that he's away, and not so much from a fact of, of maybe a, even a bamboozlement, but from the simple fact that I think he may be recontemplating what yeah. he did. He may have come well, back Jim, and looked around and like, uh, this ain't what I signed up for. And, yeah, want, he should have stayed retired for sure. Yes. Yeah, because because I do agree with Mike here. He don't owe the Bucks nothing else. They were they became a champion. They on TV every week. They're back relevant again. You know so. He gave them what they wanted, you know, just like when LeBron went back to Cleveland and gave them their championship and moved on again. It's like you can't be mad at that. So we'll see how that how that plays out. And hey, ask Julio, does he owe him something? Because Julio took No, this is, <laughs> this is what Julio gets. This is what Julio gets for pulling the wool over our eyes up here in Nashville. Yeah. That's what the, Julio's getting exactly what he deserves. Good for him. You still uh-huh. mad about that jersey purchase, aren't you? You know what? It's burning over in the field right now. Right. Hey, you can wear it tonight. Nobody will mind. Go ahead, wear no. it tonight. Get get your youth. You're trying to get me beat up on one of those viral stadium videos. Didn't, he, yeah. didn't he just moss? Didn't he just moss that one? Uh, the Titans cornerback. I forgot who it was though. Mike, don't don't do that. Don't we not? This ain't even about the Titans this week. This is about the Titans tonight. Shouts out to Terrell Green checking in. He said Brady's wrong if he walks away this late. That's yeah. my point. That's what I said. It won't it's hurt be something though. going. It's something going on in his house. They are at a tug of war. Giselle. She got some pissed. lipstick on the mirror. And he had and to come back home. Yeah. He, he did. He had to come back. Oh, maybe, maybe it is some count, Paul. Remember last time we said it wasn't no count? No, no. Um, Giselle has been, she's the one that's been hoodwinking all of this. And I mean this respectfully, of course. Yeah. But she was like, you you said that this was it after you won your yeah. title. And then you, you pulled another one on me. So, like, like Mike, you're a married man. The coop, you're a married man. You understand that the power that the that the wife has over the household. You don't want to. You don't want to upset that apple cart, and you're not going to play forever. So I wouldn't even blame him if he's getting house pressure to walk away at this age and stage of his career. She don't want him to have CTE in five years. The man I has think, been very fortunate. I think he only decided to come back because they broke that he was retiring before he did, and he's so controlling that, that he tried to prove them wrong. And he came back. That's what we said. That is what we said. That's the collection plate. Yeah, yeah. That he had to just come back and say, oh, no, I'm not done. Yeah, 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 you're done. Yeah, He is that (laughs) pig. Yeah. I wouldn't even be mad at Tom. I wouldn't even be mad at Tom for that because let me do that my way. Let me do it my way. So I'm not. It's his retirement. It's his his career. Man, right. stop it. As much as I you, gave you this game, damn it, I want to go out on my own terms. Well, you did. And I, re- I respect that. So what did they announce it the day before? You, somebody on your team leaked it. They just didn't get in your brain and find out. Someone on his team leaked it. It was so, Giselle probably. Yeah. She was like, I'm sick yeah, of this. So I, you can't get mad <laughs> it at It probably him. was. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hey, but you see, but, they're but staying away look, from him, though. They're scared of him. They're not going not near his injured. house. Right. Because if oh, no, he's been outside, his what they got, Monk? Hey, what they got? Monkey pox? Like, what's going on? I, I, I'm trying to figure oh out, like, God. Hey, in my mic voice, moving on in a hurry. Our countdown to kickoff continues. <laughs> Mike, you went viral with that last week, by the way. Good job by you, sir. Um, our countdown to kickoff continues with our coverage of the NFC North this week. Um, the Tasha, let me ask you this because you're the queen of keeping real. <laughs> is this the least competitive division in all of football? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we can rock it with it there. Mike, you agree? <laughs> uh it's 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 low. I don't know. I don't know if they're the worst, but they're definitely down there. Who would who would, who would you put in that category along with, with uh with them? The AMC South. Hmm. I know that's what you want to say. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with Titans having a weak season this year. I'm gonna have to Come put AFC South down there too. Say it with your chest, Mike. It's so okay. say it. Say it. Like I mean, it's true. It. We don't know what the AFC South is gonna do either. Right. That, that, at, least, at least here we know Green Bay is gonna win. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, cool. Is this the least uh, competitive division in all the football? 
Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. It, it's going to be hard to scratch 10 wins out of any one of those teams. Really? Okay, because let me go to you then, because my next question was three straight 13 and three seasons. Does it, does Green Bay make it four if a division is this week? Coop, we'll start with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're definitely going to win a division, but I'm worried right now because uh, Rodgers is speaking out a lot on his receivers this week. He is terrified without Devontae. He is terrified, and he's getting up in age, and he knows that this team is not on par because he can't just will a team to win anymore. He showed that in the playoff game last year against the 49ers. Yeah. So he's terrified. He doesn't like this team, and thank God that he's in the uh, NFC mess, not the North, the NFC, NFC mess, because that's <laughs> why it's a mess. Your, 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 your nonverbal uh, communication just came through the screen. Please explain the facial expression. Oh, because the comment said that the Vikings uh, were going to win or something like that. And I was like, ain't no way. Ain't no way. No way. They might. They can put up in in, in, in Glenn's defense, you do have Justin Jefferson. You do have Adam Thielen, who's a quality uh, number two. uh, uh, You do have Dalvin Cook. Stop. As long as you got Kirk, I don't want to get the vaccine. Kirk Cousins (laughs) in as your quarterback. But they're gonna put up points, T. They they can score. I don't care. So if, you got Kirk that ball. Cousins, if you got yes. Kirk Cousins, the, the the taking it to the bank all-star as your quarterback, you ain't going nowhere. We have seen what he has done everywhere he's been, he's been subpar yeah. or at par. That's it. Now he he's gonna vomit some games, but with <laughs> with those two receivers, he can get they can they can put up some points and steal some games. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I always root for Dalvin. Ain't gonna happen. I, mean, I, I like it. Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> And I, nah, like I got the Lions finishing the head of the Vikings. Mike, you, no. you're right here on, on task with the trip. No. You're right here on task, which, by the way, they have no privy to the final rundown right before the show. They're doing this live off the cuff, so y'all need to pay respect to these guys right here and gal for doing their thing. Very, very impressive doing it off the cuff live like this. So that was my next question, Mike. Way to get in my head. Who wins more games? Mike says Detroit. Tasha, do you agree? Detroit or Chicago? Man. Chicago is going to win more games as long as that it ain't even Justin Fields or the team. It's the actual field at Soldier Field that's terrible. But no, I say uh, the Lions are just they man. They just going to Detroit. Detroit going to Detroit, man. Let me say the Lions. Yeah. Won the Lions. Man, y'all got to watch Hard Knocks, man. It's a different it's a different team. I, under, I understand it, but oh, I would, but somebody won't, won't give me that, that password to the HBO, selfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul. Come on, man, that's behind us. Paul and Coop, awesome. come on now. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, the Lions are just, the Lions are just going to be the Lions. It's just, I don't understand why that franchise, yeah. I mean, and they have the coldest uniform with that Honolulu blue with the gray pants and the Honolulu blue socks, man, and they can't, they can't never get it done. Is that gray or yeah. smoky? Which the way, is it smoky gray now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's saying now smoky gray. And so I, that's the new gray. I, I'm not pretty <laughs> for the new gray. <laughs> cool. Do you agree with Mike that Detroit will win more games than Chicago? Man, I don't know. Last night, that Chicago team looked horrendous. They were like the two yard Titans, the dink and dunk tight end. <laughs> that was that was miserable, man. I, I mean, his well, athletic ability so should be able to pull out. Hey, that, 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 that was terrible. I, I still think Chicago is going to win more than Detroit. I'm worried about just I, I just don't even know like... if Detroit. I just don't know what Detroit is anymore. I mean, but to what you were what you were getting ready to allude to, you know, you only as good as your offensive line, especially yeah. when you're. I mean, he's still relatively new, and when you play that style that he plays, you're you're only as good as your as your offensive line. Exactly, you're right. You're right. I think what sets them apart right now is uh, Detroit's head coach Dan Campbell. I I really like what he's doing down there. I think he's changed. I think he's turning around. If if he doesn't, it'll at least be in the incline to be close in a couple years. Um, But I like what they're doing. That that ball's gonna be six win teams. Mike, real quick, can I disclose the the total amount that you gave me off off wax this week that you said the Lions were gonna win, and I sent back two eyeball emojis. (laughs) Yeah, sure, go ahead. Because I I won't if you don't want to say it live. No, you can say it. That's fine. Uh, 
uh, everybody that's watching, Mike said that, that Detroit's going to win 10 or 11 games this year. You taking the uh, over of the hundreds. Mike hit that blunt this morning. Right. Did you, did you, did you, get, did you, did you steal something about dope, Mike? Hey, that no, I'm saying, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand My with it. It's at least going to be 10 games. Hey, Mike, you hit, the, you hit that fentanyl this morning. Did yeah. You get some Narcan right now. <laughs> <laughs> 10 or 11? How? Is everybody going to catch it? I don't know what. <laughs> hey, Mike, we, look, the, the reason why I wanted to put it on wax is because if they do, you're going to have a victory lap when that clip yes. goes, comes back up. And resources. Yep, the same now, way as Tom Brady now, when he came back and won the Super Bowl. That, that Look, okay, Mike, I done gave you your props for that. You was right. Let, let's leave that alone. <laughs> I picked Penny <I> <laughs> Hill over Brady, and I look like a sucker. Hey. Whatever, uh, whatever Coop said, I'm I'm with it. My I knew my, I knew my bag was a little light when I was trying it was to a little light. <laughs> my bag was a little light. So I really think you flew in and stole yeah. some of my stuff and you smoked gotcha. this morning. And like like Stand like on it, Mike. Said, on. Stand on it, Mike. Stand on it, Mike. That's right. Say it with your Detroit chest. All yeah, right, they're going. Now, they're going six and eleven. It's get, it, you can talk it right now. It's I just have an insider with the Lions. Okay, Aiden Hutchinson hit me up, and he was like, "Man, it's a different team." And I was like, "Okay, I got you." Okay, this, sounds, sounds I mean, good. I don't think six wins is a is a bad season for them either. By the way, I mean it's it's more than what they've gotten in the last what 10, 15 years. Yeah, well, they they only had three wins last season, so yeah, they're gonna get six. Yeah. They, they're double that win total. They're moving in the right direction, as we would say. <laughs> oh, that's coach speak. That's yeah, coach. yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're on the upswing, baby. We got six. But, but what Jarrell just what Jarrell just said, they really trying to put Justin Fields in a good position, but they're not putting anything around him. They're not giving that guy any any kind of outside receivers, and they're not giving him any any offensive line. They should have drafted a little bit better. I don't trust him as a quarterback anyway. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily tank, but I mean, you—they don't have anything around him. He's—he's he's not the—he's not the right quarterback. He, to me, he doesn't—he doesn't have an NFL arm to me. Mmm. Mmm. He just wants to run. <laughs> a team like the Forty yeah, or the run. Ravens or or a team like that, I think he'd find more success. Yeah, I, I, that way. Yeah. Than with a, a yeah. team that has. And especially when you're playing in the NFC North with all that bad weather. So his his arm just, I don't know. He just doesn't impress me. They, what yeah. they only, uh, so the, far. Go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. Paul your wife, no, I'm just saying so far, not so good for Chicago. That was my final word on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> And let me um, pull up. Right on. All right. Now, uh, let's talk a little college uh, football, maybe. Um, Action is set to occur in a couple of weeks. Um, Nice picture, by the way. Let's start with let's start with you, Coop. (laughs) What? Well, and, and I'm asking you because you're the one non-Big Ten fan on the panel. So I wanted to ask you to see if we can get a a, a better, a, a, a non-biased answer here. What can the Big Ten do? What does the Big Ten need to do to overthrow the SEC as the kings of college football? Um, it's, it's nothing they can do. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not their fault. Nothing it's no- the South. The, the people in the South eat, breathe, and sleep college football that's not the way in the north it's nothing against the big 10 but it's reality when you in tuscaloosa athens it ain't nothing else going on down there they don't have any enough those people live hey man they die on wor- worrying about who's the recruit in the eighth grade nobody else has time to keep up with that but these people they live in these small woods and they're out in the woods and that's all mm-hmm. they do they eat and sleep this i the Big Ten is trying. You can go get UCLA. Nobody cares. These people are wow. die. They die over college football. The SEC, that's yeah. just what it is. And and most of the teams in the SEC aren't good, but their fan base is so rabid that you would think that they're up for the title every year, and it ain't but two or three of them in the SEC every year. 
But if from the outside, you would think everybody is going to the champ, but they're not. That is very true. Right here in Tennessee, we see that all the time with the Vols. Yeah. Um, yep. They ain't been Mike, good in 25 years. Yeah. There's a lot of Any there's a lot of that? right things. There's a lot of right things he said and a lot of wrong things he said. Oh, right wow. things. Okay. No. The, Brandy, the right Brandy things. Michael, yeah. The right things were that, yeah, in the South, that that is the thing is like football, right? So it's like middle school, high school, like it's it's bigger than most of pro teams, I would say at this yeah, point. Yeah. Um, but as far as like people not caring or the talent wise, I mean, I would say if you look at it, even in people in the NFL right now, a lot of them are coming from the Big Ten. So then you got to understand like, OK, well, if it's not the talent um, is it the coaching? It's not definitely not the fan base because if we look at total revenue, Big Ten teams are at the top. Um, so I, I don't think it's revenue or people not caring. Um, I think it is more consistency, kind of like our, our our season or or what we're talking about. Um, so I think it is definitely consistency. I think if we consistently show that there's other teams besides Ohio and Michigan that can compete or at least play with some SEC teams, and that's what it's going to take. We need some Michigan states, Penn states to be consistently good as well. As well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. I mean, Michigan needs to be consistently good as well. So um, Mike, I think that's the biggest let me, thing. Let me, let me stop you right now, Mike. They got their $7 billion deal. In two years, they're coming to CBS. Who's going to watch Rutgers – Against Northwestern at three o'clock on a Saturday. Not me. That is that's why that's what I'm trying <laughs> to explain me. to you, my brother. It doesn't work. Who's watching Illinois and Nebraska at three o'clock on me. Saturdays, dude? It doesn't work. But Not you can, me. because when you're used to watching Auburn and Arkansas at 2 30 on CBS in the in the fall, and then you go and you got Woo, what's that little music they play when they come on? And they got to say, we got Rutgers in Illinois. And everybody's going to say, what the hell? <laughs> you coming in hot, bro. It's, I'm it's just true. being real, bro. Nobody's going to watch you're, that. You're, you're, scoop, you're skipping ahead, but it's, that's fine. No, that's fine. Nobody's going to watch that football, bro. I'm just I'm just being real. No, nobody's gonna watch that. It's no way that but people will watch Michigan because the top but views they, were Michigan. Michigan. But, but Michigan's but gonna play Rutgers and right. nobody's watching them play them. Yeah, and Alabama's gonna play Western Kentucky Tech. Like, come on, let's be but, real. But Alabama doesn't the have the strongest the schedule either. But uh, no, what I'm True. saying is the when Alabama plays Kentucky at 2 30, people watch. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna watch Michigan. Pull up those views. Rutgers. Pull up those views. Let's see. Let's see that against uh, a Michigan right, versus right. Northwestern. Let's see. They no, let's see. Seven, no, they no, paid no. seven billion dollars mm -hmm. to show Rutgers in Illinois. You got to be in Northwestern. And I'm. I sound. You sound jealous. You sound jealous. No, it's okay though. No, I'm not one, an right. SEC fan. It's okay. I'm just, Notre Dame fan. I'm just. I'm just explaining to you the logistics of college football. They I mean, that, overpaid that's, that's for nothing. That's true. Because nobody's I'm going to watch. I would nobody's watch, gonna watch Alabama uh, totally disagree. in Illinois at 2.30 prime time. That's See, that's that's the small – That's you're, you're talking about small revenue Stop. rather than the large Stop. picture of Stop. having now, Big now, Ten. Mike, if you have and, a chance to watch a game – now, of course, yes. you and I are going to pick Michigan. But the overall scheme, the overall, people yes. are going to watch – Alabama. Who would not want to watch Michigan and USC on NBC? I'm not. I'm. I'm not talking about That's Michigan week. USC. Yeah, yeah. I'm Who wouldn't want to watch uh, Ohio versus UCLA? I'm talking about an Alabama versus a Missouri. They're going, even though Missouri is crap, yes. they're going to want to watch that. No one's going to want, want to watch Michigan and Rutgers. I don't even want to no. watch. <laughs> Take that back right now, Tasha. I'm Take gonna watch back. it. Only reason I'm watching it is because it is my team. Yeah. I'm gonna watch that because I want to see what Michigan does. Alabama is not my team. Missouri's not my team. But if if the overall country, if they had a choice, they're gonna watch the Crimson Tide. They're number yeah. one for a reason. And like to Paul's question, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like go on and lighten this up. The only way somebody gonna topple the SEC. Is to pull a, a, a Ray Finkel, and that's the AKA Lois Einhorn, <laughs> and kidnap all the mascots. That's it. <laughs> and the quarterbacks. So Snowflake couldn't do his so so uh, Bully can't do his his halftime routine, 
and and kidnap wow. quarterbacks because I think y'all are being a little too hard on the Big Ten. No, 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 no. no. As much as I hate it, the SEC is the is the top echelon right now. They just have more obviously money. not. They, they at least they don't know they don't they don't know, they don't know how to work with businesses they or something. Have, they have more. What do you what do you mean, Mike? Even they lower bottom feeder teams are more relevant. I don't want to see Rutgers play anybody. Anybody. Only teams in the Big Ten that I'm gonna break my neck to see: Iowa, Michigan, Ohio, a Penn State. Those are really the and, and, and Michigan State. Those are only five. Hey, that's teams. a lot of teams, though, Tasha. That's yeah, what teams. five teams from the SEC would you watch, no matter Florida, who they played? I'm gonna watch Georgia. I'm gonna watch Kentucky. I'm gonna watch. What's Kentucky. the last game Florida played? Definitely gonna watch. Thank Florida. you. Thank you. I'm gonna watch LSU. You I'm don't know Florida, exactly. And I'm gonna watch see, Alabama. I'm gonna see, watch the, seven of those. T- and and it, that's the, not, I'm gonna watch nine teams in that the SEC. Big Ten, the Big Ten teams don't ring a bell because they haven't won any titles. Thank see, you. See, when you don't win any titles, nobody cares. See, you except you networks, have, right? No, they overpaid because they got the L.A. TV market. That's, no, the they paid the because they know people watch Big Ten games more no, than they, they do at SEC they games. Got, it's that they LA, got, what did I say? That's the, the LA TV that market. On that yeah. Fox. That is money. If you go to California, That's you're it. only watching Pac-12 teams. If you That's put it, it on the SEC, everybody's going to put it on CBS. Yeah. Everybody's going to watch it. it it's it's SEC a made a mistake. They only got a, what SEC made a mistake by just signing with ESPN. That was their mistake. No. They should have got a lot more, and they should have diversified by splitting it up throughout the network, like the Big Ten did. And they got paying tons of money. They, they're going to pull this deal in four years after it's done because when they see five people watching Michigan, five Illinois, people. Michigan, Northwestern, dude, and uh, no people, way, the no SEC. The SEC fans go to the game. They got if they're filling up ninety th- they're not worried about their oh, revenue oh, oh, because their teams are going. Michigan is sitting pretty at at, at hundred percent plus. <laughs> That's and one they, team. They rocking. Everybody. Okay, everybody, Penn State. That, Come on now. Nobody's going to the games in the Big Ten other than Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan. What I'm telling you is the revenue. They didn't care about that. It is no coincidence that the only reason. The Big Ten got a seven billion dollar deal after they said, "Oh, USC, UCLA coming." That that deal is all set on that time slot, that LA market. It had nothing to do with wanting to see Illinois, Northwestern, and Wisconsin and Rutgers. Had nothing to do with that. That take a take a step back, take a step back, take a step back, and look at what's going on. The SEC doesn't care. They got the SEC network and all ESPN. They're going to be fine. No, Mm-mm. CBS has took a dive with this deal. That's why it took, that. what, it's seven networks on this deal? They had to get seven. You're not going to know what channel is on. The Peacock <laughs> Network, CBS, Fox. They, they did cool. a seven. Now, now look, now. They ain't look. got the Peacock Network, so it can't go there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't I have Peacock Network either. Please don't put us on Peacock yeah. Network. But look, hey. all right, now I just Googled. I just Googled just now for the sake of, of, of fairness. I just Google while you all were having your your debate the top twelve most viewed college football games in two thousand and twenty one. Number one was Michigan Ohio State. Number Which we two, do. number two was uh, was Georgia Alabama, of course, national title game. Iowa Michigan was number four. Mm-hmm. Michigan State Michigan was number five. Um, but the rest was pretty much littered with SEC. It's about even if you look at the top tier teams from each conference. I mean, the because we are the we are the best two conferences overall. Like I said, no one's watching Pac-12 because it all comes on at ten o'clock at night, and I'm asleep. The, that's the big, real. The Big Ten well, and the SEC the are the top like me. two conferences, so people are going to watch. But what Mike is Mike is being blinded by his Big Twelveness. <laughs> what yeah. Coop is trying to say is that that's like with me in the NFL. I would watch back in the day. I would watch Seattle and a, and a Arizona back in the day just because it was NFL football. People will watch a bad Missouri and a South Carolina Gamecocks game simply because it's SEC football. And it's the type of athletes that's in there. Right. Game. Nobody's yeah. necessarily going to want to watch a Rutgers and a Northwestern. So that's why I agree with It's you. the same as watching – you can say that for the SEC. Yeah. Like, who wants to watch – you know, North Missouri West versus North, Tennessee. North like, nobody wants to watch that. Hey, leave Tennessee out of this mic. The <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the same. Yeah, you cannot it's get it. you watch Rutgers. It's a different, it's a different See, type of athlete. I think, 
I think we're, it's two things. So one thing is we can definitely met this is measurable, right? So throughout the season, we can easily pull like, okay, let's see. And we'll, let's see what works. Um, I think, I think a second thing to what Coop is saying is like, it's a, it's a larger picture. And what we're getting to is that this deal is going to change the way that the networks look at different conferences. I think SEC definitely needs to branch out out of the ESPN um, because I mean, yeah, that's a small deal. Wow. Like, let's be real. Three hundred million dollars. And if you cable, you can't even watch it. Three hundred million dollars is totally different than one billion dollars. Like, but let's they be real. Only got Who, that deal because they got the UCLA and USC. They what what smart, kid? That was a shrewd move, though. That was a yeah. smart business move. We yeah, it's catch, one billion dollars oh, yeah. a year. Yeah. That's crazy. All of the money, and that's where you're going. Just that's, that's and what, from what a from a high gonna, school kid who wouldn't want to be on either kids. Fox, CBS, NBC. No, right, right. Fox, they they gotta have cable in the Big Ten. They, they, I guarantee ESPN, Notre Dame kids do, right? Because no. ESPN is the brand. Everybody's gonna clamor yes. because that's the, that's the mothership. They're gonna clamor for ESPN. They could Mike, care less about. Mike, let me tell you what you're up against. You up against. Three, well, two Nashvilleans who grew up in SEC country to where it was SEC, it was God, SEC. Paul, and, you and keep family. saying I, I did not grow up in that. Yeah, Tasha, SEC. Come on, it came out. We went to school together, Tasha. <laughs> <laughs> we went to school together. So, I, Mike, I'm you're, just, you're, I'm you're, just up, speaking you're, on, you're pushing the rock uphill yeah. on this panel because just, I think I'm there's just a speaking distinction on between. I, but yeah. I was, I'm a Big Ten girl. I was born in Big Ten country. I've always been a Big Ten girl. The only school clothes that I wore was Michigan. That's what I had until the guy that I used to date, because he was from Tennessee, he bought me a UT sweatshirt. Clank, I've, I've, always, I've always been Big Ten. Who who no, used but to but date? But what I'm saying, Mike, is... You know what? There, Get off my line. Get <laughs> there's a difference line. between the country following the Big Ten and the South. Following That's the different. Big Ten. It's different. We're in the yeah. South, right. The South and we're South talking South a world, country. we're talking about a Indiana worldwide versus, deal. Uh, like it's crazy. But but it, nobody it, else it, is right. nobody. See, see, Mike, the, the difference is on this. That's why they the the country kind of tunes out on a championship game because they're like, it's always just SEC teams. They want to see something different, that. but there's nothing different that. out there. See that, and that's the difference is you're saying, oh, so you think people in in California are clamoring to see Northwestern and Illinois and Rutgers? No, that that's not. That's why they go on the Peacock. That's what you just said. Okay, let's yeah. okay, so let's do this. That might be. Let's it. do this. Okay, so thank you. I think we can. I think we can all agree to disagree here on this particular topic, and it did. Skip ahead to a, another topic we were going to discuss, which we just discussed. So let's go back to our <laughs> SEC preview for just a second. Cool. Who's the biggest threat in the SEC West to knock off Alabama? SEC East. The yes. SEC West. That's the knock. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying Georgia, you're Alabama. Uh, it's it should be Texas and M, but I'm still not sold on their quarterback situation, and that's every year. They have everything him. around right. them. Yeah. They got all the studs. They got all the wide receiver running back. They just can't get a quarterback who can play a half a game. It should be Texas mm -hmm. A&M by a long shot. Yeah. Um, I think I think Ole Miss will be third. And it looks like, oh, Auburn is trash. Arkansas is trying <laughs> to do something. They're trying to get rid of Auburn coach as we speak, like right now. And uh, like I said, Ole Miss doesn't have a defense, so that's not going to work. They're gonna put up points, but yeah, it should be Texas A and M. They spend enough money, so you got to go with Texas A and M. Yeah, Mike, do you agree? Yeah, I would agree. And uh, you know, we look back to the last time that Alabama was kind of bleeding. You know, they showed blood was against LSU, and they built up that rivalry. Ever, you know, you never knew that year that who would win, right. LSU or Alabama. Right. LSU. That was, that was and, the game every year. And right. and most recent, A and M has been that team, like. They've yeah. upset the uh, Alabama a couple of times, and so it's like, yeah. man, maybe this is the only, the team. But the problem, and I agree with Coop, is that A and M doesn't know how to get past their own head and finish right. out a season. Right. Like they start yeah. out strong, but they yeah. just don't know how to finish. Right. Then they'll beat Alabama, then lose to Clanger Clanger the next week. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, Klinger, Klinger talk <laughs> that was no, that, that was a compliment. That was a segue yeah. to you. 
the, hey, does Klinger Klinger have a chance to get in the mix in the SEC West? Who can knock off Alabama? First off, let me give my shout out to one Mr. Drew Merriman. And when you listen to this show, Drew, I'm not the one that was talking funky about your Oh, game. he knows. He knows that there ain't no count. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I'm agreeing with the panel. It's, it's A&M simply because of what they have. LSU is in the rebuilding stage. They got your old coach, Coop. Auburn is yeah. crappy. You know, Woo Pig is only so much you can go there. I refuse to root for old piss. And, you know, Plank and Plank is in my heart because they got all my money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go to the East. Damian Coulter checking in. Thank God you missed the Bears segment, D. Um, yeah. we, we'll, we'll circle back around to that. But, right, that was the best national championship game was Texas-USC. Um, oh, yeah. East, yeah. We're coming back to you on the East. Who it, it Was Georgia a one-hit wonder? And who can knock them off? and uh, make it to Atlanta for the SEC championship game? Um, it's going to be between Kentucky and UT. Mm-hmm. Yes. Everything's the going balls, to be on baby. the line. October 29th, make sure you're watching. Kentucky and UT, that will be the game that decides who's going to battle Georgia. Georgia's reloading. They lost uh, about 15 NFL players. Yes, uh, they're they probably did. going to start out defense. slow. I'm interested in checking them out that first game. I think they played, what, Oregon? Yeah, they do. That would be good because they're revamping, revamping on defense. But, you know, they were they returning uh, Nolan Smith and Jalen Carter on defense, and they stuck with the quarterback. He should be better. But <laughs> those that, that game, uh, Kentucky and UT will be a big game. Will Levis is nice. I like Will Levis with Kentucky. He's a first-round draft pick. Uh, that, that game will be big. And then UT has a murderous role like they play – LSU, Alabama, man, they got like five in a row, and then they get to Georgia. So right. I don't know if they're going to be beat up by – I think they play November or something, but it's going to be rough. They they got a five-game – because I, I I like I like Tennessee team. They're going to put up a lot of points, and I'm expecting them to go 10-2. and two. If they go less than 10-2, yes, it's going to be a bad season. Now, you know AP Coulter is a, is a proud graduate of the University of Tennessee. She's going to throw some black hearts up there for you on that one. Mike, yeah. who's, who can knock off Georgia, or is Georgia just simply the class of the SEC East? I think as of right now, you don't see too much competition, but I'm going to go with Kentucky. Uh, I think yeah. they're at number 20 this year starting out. Uh, Georgia also has to travel to Kentucky. Um, if I were Kentucky, I'd make that a night game. Let's get as much fans as we can in that in that stadium. Um, I know they're building on their defense, a uh, little yeah. wishy-washy on their offense, though, so I'm not too sure. That's why I think Georgia still might take it, uh, but they are getting stronger over the past years. T. Sizzle, who you got in the SEC East? Uh, yeah, Coop took my kind of took one of my spoilers, uh, my upsets. I was going to say UT, even though they have that big, you know, that gauntlet coming into Georgia, all they need, all they need to do is beat Georgia. You know, to yeah. make what we're saying come true is to, is to, to knock them off. And, and Kentucky, in these what past what? Oh my God, past ten years or so, Kentucky has really been showing yeah. that they're just not a basketball school. I mean, they they struggle towards the end; they really can't finish yeah. it. But Kentucky has really been playing some good ball within these last ten years or so. Well, they struggle at the end because their lack of depth. Yeah, a lot of time you go through all those teams and get beat up. See, that's what makes Georgia and Alabama so great that they got Lima, not the Lima D. So if two go down, they got four more been waiting three years. So if the depth is finally catching up at Kentucky and they're 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 starting to build up their defense. And they got that wide receiver I want to check out from Pearl Cone. I wonder what he's gonna do. They say he's a knucklehead, but uh he can play ball. Cause but, y'all remember that game, that LSU Kentucky game, when it went into those multiple overtimes, yeah. like Kentucky, and that's when LSU was, you know, up top. Yeah. And yeah. Kentucky, that was what 2008, 2007, 2009. Kentucky was was in there with them, yeah. like literally in there with them. Hey, what about that uh, September 24th? Florida plays UT, and uh, Florida's gonna try it out Anthony Richardson, uh, run the ball all over because he's a horrible quarterback. But that's all they got left. So third, that would be third, a big game. Third Saturday in September. Hey, like if if Florida beats UT, you'll know UT ain't nothing in. So this is no, we're not having no UT slander on my mama's porch. We're no, not doing that. I'm just today. telling you. We about to move <laughs> on in a hurry. 
We're not doing that on my mama porch. I gotta stay here all weekend. We're not doing that. All right. Now, the other day, Michigan Mike had had sent me something. They really got my my brain just really just going. He sent me a, a, a clip of the top 50 college football stadiums by capacity. Really, this picture could be called the Big Ten Invitational. Because the whole damn conference is on this list. Now, Coop, there are some SEC teams there, too. I see Notre Dame sprinkled in there somewhere. Um, but more than just just Michigan being number one, which they are. Right. My question is, I started looking through these and wondering, seeing how many, counting how many of these stadiums I've been to. So it got me to thinking, wow, what is the best venue that you've ever been to for a sporting event? We'll start with you, Coop. What's the best venue, sporting venue you've been to? Football, basketball, oh. boxing, whatever. Man, last year I got to go to the Final Four in Dallas, and that was amazing to see uh, Alabama, what, the Alabama-Cincinnati. Oh, nice. Man, nice. man that, that atmosphere was amazing. I didn't know it was that enormous of an event. And, um, man, it's got me clamoring to at least try to get back to one of those Final Four uh, games. Like, the atmosphere of the Cincinnati fans, Alabama fans, it was bananas. And that was my first time going to Jerry World, and that, that place is just awesome. So it is. That, it is. That, that has to be my favorite as far as big. Now, I went to uh, Florida, Florida UT about 11 years ago and down nice. in Florida, and it was nice, but – it had nothing compared to that that uh, Final Four game last year. That thing was roaring. I mean, it was amazing. Mom's is watching. She said, "Watch out, Coop." <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But that's good stuff. Texas does football on a on a grand scale. When I moved there, I learned firsthand just how the city embraces football. And even when the opposing fans come in from from different cities to watch football there, it's always a great time. Mike. You've been to some notable stadiums, some notable games. Which one breaks out as your favorite? Yeah, I've actually – I don't know how many. I've been to the Texas one. I've been to Texas Tech. Um, obviously, my number one is going to be Under the Lights 1, uh, 1 and 2. Uh, we're definitely uh, great atmospheres. 1 and 2. We know it was 1 because of how the game ended. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think the difference on the 2, uh, under, under the Lights 2, is – I think we knew as fans that we were going to win that game. And under lights one, Notre Dame was actually up by significant margin. And then we just came back and started, you know, nicking away at it. Um, other than that, I'm going to have to agree with Coop, too, uh, from a basketball standpoint of, you know, watching the Bas- Michigan versus Kansas um, yeah. in Jerry yeah. Dome. That the was just electric. The yeah, the Trey Burke three. Uh, that yeah. was just wild because we had no – we had no way of winning that game unless the Kansas had changed their game plan, and those fans were upset. They were. Man. They were. That was, a, that was a great, great night. That was a great night. Wow, Mike, you've been to some memorable Michigan moments there. I'm trying to say that yeah. three times in a row. T. Sissel, <laughs> what, what, what's one of your, your favorite sports venues that you've been to? And I hate to say this. Uh-oh. I mean, this goes into my top five, so I'm just gonna go on and put this. This is my number one, and I'm. I mean, I hate to say this. I was in Neyland Stadium mm. when oh, nice. I was in Neyland Stadium when I always FIs, wanted to go there. When the FIs lost, I can't remember who they were playing. It was the year because not because Tennessee won a championship in what '99. It was a '98 season, yeah. but it was '99. I think T- UT was playing like UAB or somebody like that. When they the Blazers. <laughs> when they put the score, announced that score that the FIs had lost. When I tell you, I thought Neyland Stadium was about to become an island. It literally <laughs> shook because I was like, well, "Y'all getting me ready for football?" Right. I was like, "Is it an earthquake? Like we were about to fall off into the Tennessee River?" Because to be in that stadium at that moment. Yeah, I mean, y'all, and y'all know at that time, like the big house is like this. The big house goes out like this. Neyland Stadium is up like this. I start those VOLS signs. I was like, oh shit, it's falling. It's, it, I'm <laughs> like, it's gonna fall. I mean, literally, y'all, I'm not, y'all, yeah. I'm serious. The, the ground was shaking because everyone was jumping up and down, screaming because that, that was putting UT at number one. That's so, that's a that's a good one, and I hate that 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 this is carrying the SEC theme. Of course, I went to Under the Lights too. That was just walking into the big house was just a magical moment. But me being a Michigan fan, 
of course that's going to put that over the top. But one of the the the, the wildest venues I've ever been to was Caesar's Palace when I think it was 2011 when Sugar Shane Mosley fought um oh my gosh uh Manny Pacquiao mm. and they fought for the title there and Jamie Foxx came out and sung the national anthem and it was just, I had hey. never been to a boxing event in Vegas before and that atmosphere was wild now of course under the likes too beating Notre Dame <laughs> <laughs> Rob on, on TV was, was, was amazing. As a matter of fact, I took a step out of the stadium for a few minutes to gather myself when I realized I was actually there. Um, the, uh, but, but to Drew's credit and, and to the A&M, the Aggies credit, they have a phenomenal atmosphere at Texas A&M. I was there the, uh, when they put Alabama. It was Derrick Henry's Alabama team on the infamous night that Michigan did the kick six and Ooh. punted the ball to Michigan State, blocked it, and yeah. scored a touchdown. It was that Saturday. I went from the highs of being at a great SEC game, watching Derrick mm. Henry run for 213 yards, to getting back to the car and checking my phone, and Michigan is trending. It was your fault. We needed yeah. you. Right, Mike. I'm sorry. I let us down on that one. And so, shout, out to the, shout out to the 12th man, the original swag surfers. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's, that's, that, that, their traditions are unlike any other. Like, you have yeah. to, to study – all of the different chants and stuff that they do before the game. So that was pretty nice as well. And now, also, I forgot also last season, I got to check out Florida State, Notre Dame in Florida State on that Monday night. Out. In Doe hey, Campbell, man, Doe Campbell, hey, yes. That was rocking, dude. We were tailgating from like 2 o'clock and the game didn't end at like midnight. Yeah, I was I was pretty tore up. Yeah, but uh, I know it you was were. Great. I was, was, you was tore. Hey, College that football. atmosphere was great, man, and it was like Notre Dame fans everywhere. And I got to see uh, I met the team getting off the bus. I was like a little kid, man. It was cool. That was that's awesome. There's nothing like yeah. a college football atmosphere. That that yeah, is, is the best. Now, Tasha, you know how we close out the show with T Sizzle's top five. What are your top five sporting venues around the world, whether you've been there or not? Okay, I already gave you um, UT just off of that experience alone. If you have ever, if you ever, I know nobody wants to do this. If you're in Davis Way, which is in Starkville on a Saturday, the sound of those clanga clangas is, I should have said, like the video. They, they, they tell you silence your bell because when you hear click, 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 you cannot literally, all you hear is <sighs> because the bells are so loud. That is a great environment. Uh, Jerry Dome, if you have not had the opportunity Man. to go to an yeah. AT&T stadium for anything, football, right. basketball, ice hockey, skate, ice skating, ice hockey, <laughs> WrestleMania, whatever, anything, if you have the opportunity to go to AT&T stadium, you need to go. Of course, I cannot leave out the big house. Because a certain two did go to under the lights and didn't tell me, but I no, we told you. No, you did not. Yeah, <laughs> Mike I, said we told you. No, <laughs> they, no. So let me tell you. Let me tell you, listeners. Up. They told me after when I saw Paul on the oh, photo. Oh, that's, that's that's when that's I perfect. found out. Those are fighting. That's fighting. Right, like like moving on in a hurry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, this, yeah. Uh huh, uh huh. I'm hurting, Gina. Yeah, that that hurt. That was and, hey Tasha, you missed it too. That was amazing. The night game, uh, that was amazing. Wow. And um, the last, my last stadium, and this is really out of the blue. I want to go to Wembley Stadium. I was just Ooh. about to say that was on my list. Because I they, Stadium. I mean, to think about seeing a concert in Wembley Stadium or seeing a, a football game, soccer game right, in Wembley right. Stadium. Like that's what I that's what I, I would like to go to Wembley Stadium. Mike, what's on your bucket list? Is there a stadium out there that you've yet to visit that you like to? Uh, yeah, definitely going overseas to a couple of the Spain ones. Um, Azteca, uh, Mexico is on mine too. Yeah, that's a big um, one. Uh, there's a, a new. There. Yeah, there's well, a new. Uh, next when the NFL plays there. Yeah, we could we could do that. Um, and then there's like uh, there's a new Germany stadium uh, that I I'll, I just want to go see a, a soccer game there you know because I hear those fans are different so Mike yeah, guard yeah, your baby. grill knuckle up <laughs> guard your grill Mike come on back no, and Mike gonna be good because he got the proper hue it'll be me to get the monkey and banana <laughs> chance <laughs> you know what as we move on to coop 
cool. What, what's on your bucket list? Man, oh, actually, uh, I've never been to uh, Notre Dame Stadium, and that's like you got to do that, one. man. You, you got to yeah. 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 Jesus. So I believe next season, um, TSU plays them the first game of the season. So doing I can like knock that? out two things at once, money. and but they want to <laughs> play. They don't want to play Michigan. Wait, okay? But I'm going to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going. <laughs> and uh, like I say, I went to uh, Jerry's World. It was amazing. And I'm hoping to get out to SoFi in November Ooh, to see the Chargers and the that Titans. Was, that I heard nice. that was that, awesome. That I, one looked nice. I that Candlestick Park. I went to a game in Candlestick Park. Now, that's legendary. That's like Texas Stadium. I, I, I want to the Rose Bowl. I want to go to the Rose Bowl. Oh, yeah, that was on my list, too. Rose Bowl. I, I rolled I by. Rose Bowl. I didn't get to go in it because we were out there doing the offseason. But what about – it's during not a stadium. You hear them, y'all? Yeah. But everybody says go to the Grove, go see a game at the Grove. They say it's like the uh, great atmosphere. I don't know. That's what Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Coop Deville. Okay. They okay. Don't tell tailgate. Me. They don't tailgate with regular like paper plates. They yeah. have candelabras. They okay. Have, they have china, and I'm not okay. lying. They, they tailgate with fine china out. and real forks and spoons. None of that plastic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's a sight to see. And my other one is, it's not a venue, but I always wanted to go to the Masters. Don't let Yeah, me. that was on my list, too. Yeah, yes. yeah, for the yes. golfers that, out there. Yeah, yes. yeah. Sasha, Sasha said it was absolutely gorgeous. Right, Man. right. When you just see it on TV and, and hello, friends. You know, when you yes. hear that, you know it's about to go down. They that, say everything's what's... manicured to the teeth. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> looking good, looking good. Yes. The six, Miss T. Sister, who are you shouting out this week as we bring Well, this to I'm going to shout out our favorite little nephew, our show nephew, which is one. It seems like he's getting a shout out every week. He's just doing great things. One, Mr. Elijah Fernandez, who at uh -oh. six foot two, 14 years old, played his first varsity game. And I think he came up with some sort of turnover. And his mother, uh, Stiana, was yelling so loud, the radio announcer heard her <laughs> on. The, the, through the radio, through the announcement. He heard it. It is awesome to see that come full circle because she was a phenomenal athlete as well. So it's awesome to see yes. that come full circle. And he's, yes. he's 14 and he started varsity last night. Yes. And he looks like um, Austin Eckler already. He's, he's, he's six, cut. He is 6'2". He's cut. He's hey, T, cut. I just got one thing to say. I was refereeing AAU basketball last season and he jumped out at me because he was completely dominating the AAU game. So it was about midway through – it was a timeout midway through the second half. And I was like, hey, man, what's your name? He was saying his name. I'm like, oh. I was like, where you from? Because you're not from Dixon. He's like, yeah, I'm from Dixon. I hear her holler, you're not from effing Dixon. You from uh, Preston. You from Nashville. You're from Nashville. <laughs> you're from Nashville. Y'all can hear now. Yeah. You ain't from no Dixon. You from Nashville. You from Dixon. You from – that's how she was going at. And I looked up. She that's said, Wayne. He ain't from no. I'm like, oh, that's your mom. Okay, Steve. Okay, I understand where you. I <laughs> right, mean, he was like, right. he was like dominating the game, like scoring with ease. And I was like, yes. ooh, I, I'm not supposed to be into this game like this. But I gotta ask him, who is this dude? Because he was like playing up. He was an eighth grader playing yes. on tenth grade basketball. But you, but see how tall, you see how big he is. We yeah. will be covering him soon on the extra point. And on, on top a, of that, oh, like he, he getting oh. his own segment. On top yeah, of that, he, he, Make, He's make, be covering him soon. A's and B's. It's because she don't Mike. care about that education. Hey, hey you shout Mike this week, Mike. Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a shout out to our fabulous host, Mr. P. L. Coulter over here. Uh -oh, Happy uh -oh. birthday tomorrow, officially. Um, hey, yeah, I, hey, I definitely. I definitely would say I, I wouldn't be the where I am today without Paul coming through. So, shouts out, man. Oh, man that's that's Vicey and Versi. He kept me alive down there in Dallas, Texas. Um, All I want for my birthday. You, <laughs> you stop it, Tasha. Like sometimes you just happen to just fall into the right hands, and God put you in the right circle, and uh, and that definitely happened with me. Shout out to the Hustle family. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to my mama who's uh, in the house waiting on me to get done so we can get our day started. And and, uh, and shout out to Coop coming through. Tasha T says with everybody. Shout out to Nashville. It's great to be home. And uh, we got a game to go to tonight. The Titans and the Buccaneers minus one. Tom Brady. That was an excellent segment, by the way. I love Shout that. out to my cousin, Keyshawn Vaughn. Do your thing tonight, baby. Come on, Keyshawn. We need two tubs out of you tonight. 
Even yes, though yeah, uh, I can root for him tonight because it's a preseason game, you know. What I mean? <laughs> it's like he's gonna get a lot of playing time. So, uh, and uh, and yeah. the thing is, and maximize the moment, Keyshawn. Yeah, hey, it don't, it don't matter. Up. Long as he, long as he in there, and and look, you know, he only need what is it four, uh, four seasons and a couple of games. He gonna get that pension. That boy gonna be. I guess so. And he he's will smart. be vetted. <laughs> and he's smart. Vanderbilt is smart. His mama's smart. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> all right, and with that being said, we thank you all for joining us this week. You know how we get down. We will see y'all in six days and about 23 hours. Until then, yes, go and watch some football. Peace. 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 Peace.